All right. So this is where we left off from uh, last week. Okay, so today we're starting a brand new day. And the first thing that we did was we delivered to Katie's Coffee Corner. Okay, so here's the invoice. Okay, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push this down so that you can see the whole entire invoice in one go. Okay. All right, so here you go. Here's the invoice. Okay, and on top of that, we also received um, Katie's um, a check from Katie for 50% um, COD. So if you remember from her terms, it says right here 50% COD. So again, here it is. All right, so how am I going to record this transaction? How am I going to record this tra transaction? So if I'm delivering to Katie's Coffee Corner, okay, so invoice number 101, we delivered to her store, okay? She bought 15 pounds of regular coffee, 15 pounds of Supreme, and we sold 20 cups to her. And um, here, we got a grand subtotal. We have a delivery charge, and then we have COD, and then we have amount due. All right, so we're gonna use accounts for, uh, we're gonna use accounts, uh, regular sales of regular coffee, sales of supreme coffee, and sales for, um, um, ceramic, yeah, ceramic coffee mugs. Excellent. So in this case, right, because, right, we are now recognizing our sales. But in this case, we are selling the coffee by the pound, right? We're acting as a wholesaler. So in this case, sales regular coffee, sales supreme coffee, and sales ceramic coffee mugs. Okay, account numbers. Uh, sales uh, for regular coffee is uh, 40.050. Supreme is 40.100 and ceramic is 41.50. Okay, what else do I need to recognize? Checking, debit. Yes, we are going to recognize that we have a checking. Mm. Also, we received advance payment. We did not receive an advance payment. What is this? One hundred nine fifty three. Ah, oh, got COD cash on uh, delivery. Correct. receivable yes because they only paid for half of the invoice that means they owe me money yes so 
So what's my account receivable account? Eleven thousand, okay. Okay, well, let's plug in what we have for now. Okay, so how much cash did we receive? One hundred nine fifty-three. One hundred nine fifty-three. How much cash do they owe, or how much money do they owe? One hundred nine fifty-three. 109.52. How much was the sales for regular coffee? 39.35. How much was the sales for Supreme? 39.30. 39.90, sorry. No worries. And the sales for ceramic coffee mugs? 99.80. Okay. So let's test my equation here. So where does the delivery charge come in? Well, that's exactly what I was trying to help you guys figure out. Because now, right, I have 219.05 and I have 198.05. So what am I missing? I'm missing that $30, right? Right. So that $30 must be on the credit side, right? What is delivery income to us? What is this delivery charge that we're charging them? Is it going to be... Quantity. The quantity. What, what, what do you mean by quantity? Means uh, there is a 45 LB for 30. And then uh, forty five means the forty fifteen LB ten dollar and uh, ceramic twenty dollar. No, this is just a flat charge that we just charge our customers for delivering the coffee. It's a flat rate. There's no pro rating. No, there's no way that we figure this out. It's just a flat rate. So you would use that account uh, delivery income. Delivery. Good, good, right? But in the, because we're generating income. Now, is what, what kind of income is this? Is it part of my my operations or is it going to be other income that I'm just randomly charging the customers for? Part. Okay, that's going to be... So in this case, right, is my business to deliver coffee or is it my business to sell coffee? To sell. To sell coffee. So in this case, this is going to be considered other income because this is in regards to a separate portion, it doesn't belong to the main core of operations, right? The main core here is I'm just trying to sell coffee, but because um, I ha uh, I'm have to make, uh, I mean, Albert has to drive all the way over to um, their store to deliver the coffee, Albert's going to charge the customers a convenience charge or a delivery charge of $30 per customer, no matter what it is. Because it's the it's the idea of oh I'm the we have somebody that's going to deliver the coffee to um, the individual so the customer has to pay a thirty dollar convenience charge okay so in this case this is going to be a separate charge that has nothing that doesn't have to do with the main core of operations which is going to be delivery income. When would you use when would I use it? Yeah. What's the difference? Difference between di difference between what? Between using other right now and using that delivery income one. This. Okay, so. so you, never mind. We are using that. Okay, I thought we were using other. Never mind. 
no, 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 because there, there is no other income, is there? I'm just asking you where does, where, yeah, the, I'm asking you what the category for this kind of um, income is because um, in this case, our main core of operations to generate income is to sell coffee. It isn't to, um, it isn't to deliver coffee. Okay. Mm -hmm. Teacher. Yes. This is the cost for the, uh, to add to the, the price of the items. No, this is a completely separate charge. Okay. Yeah, because it, it's like it's like um, if 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 I if I do if I go if you buy services from me, I'm gonna say okay, but because I'm delivering something to you, I'm gonna charge you twenty five dollars for that for for me to deliver it to you. Is that part of the cost of the entire of what you bought? No, it's a separate charge because you could get the product from me and come pick it up my store, but because you want me to drive it to you, I'm going to charge you $25 for that. That's what this delivery income is. It's a separate charge for a service fee because we don't, we don't deliver, we don't, um, our main core of operations isn't to deliver coffee. We are trying to sell coffee okay so this is going to be considered a separate charge just like how when you buy inventory right because they have to ship it to your store you would have freight as a separate cost but it's going to be that part but in this case right because um you don't want to pay the shipping separate right you have the um part of the cost of inventory because you want to make your customers pay for the entire thing including um the freight okay in this case i'm saying hey katie you bought some coffee for me you can come pick it up at my store if not i will charge you 30 dollars to deliver it to your store okay it's just it's a convenience charge it's a separate charge that the um customer is is gonna pay is gonna pay um separately okay all right so we have uh my journal is done right my um debits and credits match on both sides so then now what's my description going to say please corner invoice number one COD 50% net five, check 412. Good, 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 good. So Katie's. Quarter invoice number 101. 50% uh, COD net five. Check number um four one twelve four one two good so then what's next uh we will go to the general ledger good let's go to the ledger Okay. We put June nineteen Katie's corner check four one two. Seven. Okay. One hundred and nine fifty three.
15, 28, 16 should be what you're at right now. First, I'm going to be using our account receivable account. We'll do Katie's phone now. Okay. An invoice for this place. An invoice since we only have oh, so many feet, so many customers on a list should be just enough. If I pull up my invoice 101, it automatically will tell me that it's from Katie. All the information is there. So 15 pounds? Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and just make sure I put this to invoice number 101, 15 pounds, or you, got, you could say sold 15 pounds, sold, I'm just going to write 15 pounds. Okay. Oh, ten pounds. Thirty nine ninety. Twenty in the room. What's my total ending balance in my sales for ceramic coffee mugs? 141.74. Seventy-four. <coughs> Sorry. 
nice. Okay. Account receivable. This is a general ledger. We have to go to the subsidiary. So, what are we going to do in the subsidiary ledger? Subsidiary ledger for the Katie Corno. Okay, who's Katie? Katie's a client. Customer. Customer. Yes. Okay. What kind of information can I put in Katie's coffee corners? Part of invoice. James Net what? How many days does she have to pay? Five. Five, right? Net five. So in this case, no discount because you already have the terms of 50% COD. Okay? But you do have an actual due date, and what is that due date? Twenty fourth of June. Okay. Okay. So in this case, how much was the total sales? Three. Okay. Did we receive a payment? One oh nine. Okay, but how do I get to that number? Do I receive a payment? Received the check for how much? One or nine. Yeah, the number fifty three. Okay, so in this case, now that we're looking at a customer's perspective, right? Now we need to look at a different formula. It's going to be very, very, very similar to our 
vendors, right? But the only difference here is instead of dealing with accounts payable, we're dealing with 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 accounts receivable, right? We're dealing with sales, not uh, not um, any um, invoices or anything like that. However, because we're looking at how much this customer owes us, the formula is going to be equal, right? The sales price. Okay, minus any advance payments, minus any sales returns and allowances, minus any discounts, minus any payments. So same exact thing, except the only difference is we're not looking at an invoice amount or an accounts payable. We're looking at account receivable and sales. So in this case, right, if she owed me two nineteen and five cents, but she gave us a payment of one oh nine fifty three. It should say that we that she still owes me one oh nine fifty two, which is exactly what the invoice statement says that she owes. Okay. Good. What should be next? Income delivery we did delay Jira ledger yes we did that was the last thing that we did in our um, ledger we gotta pay Albert we gotta pay Albert well in this case we gotta at least calculate because we don't pay him yet but we should calculate for Albert, right? Because he did his job. So go to uh, commission's expense, okay? So he finally delivered to Katie on the 19. Invoice number 101. So now he's delivered his job, right? Or he delivered the coffee. Now, in this case, the total sales of that delivery was two nineteen oh five. So he gets the he also profits um, off the delivery charge as well. In this case, how much if Albert gets ten percent of the cut? How much is the total amount that he earned for the sale? Twenty one ninety one. Okay, in this case, that means how much do we owe him? Twenty one ninety one. Okay. One last thing that we need to do. And I'll go ahead and give it to you. So in this case, right, we received a check, right? What did we do with that check? We put it on check. Did we go to the bank yet? No deposits. So we need to record that we received, um, that we received money, right? In this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have you guys at the end of each day. So at the end of our daily sales. That is what I want you guys to go to the bank and deposit everything. So in this case, what I want you to do is at least note that you have it pending in your in your receipt, your total receipt, so you can deposit them at the end of the day. So in this case, I did receive a check for one hundred nine fifty three, but I'm not going to deposit it yet because I have to wait till the very end of the day, right? Especially take a look, right? We only got three people working, plus um, a, um, a stranger, right? Because we hired some, um, a temporary worker. Um, so in this case, right, is it possible for anybody to go to the bank at any given time? No, because it's, it's a grand opening, right? You want to have all your staff on hand. You don't want to just dip off and take, uh, take off to go um, 
deposit your check, you want to wait to the very end of the day, okay? Plus, in this case, I didn't even say deposit the money, right? I want you to deposit at the end of every single day after the daily sales. So in this case, I'm holding onto the receipt saying that I received a check, but I'm not going to deposit the money yet, okay? All right. So, right, in this case, I delivered coffee. I sold coffee. So my assumption is what do I also do? What do I also have to do? To complete this entire transaction, there's one more chunk I have to do. Inventory. I have to update my inventory. Good. So in this case, I sold 10, 15 pounds of regular and I sold 10 pounds of Supreme. So I'm going to go to the inventory worksheet. Regular coffee. Okay. At what cost per item? Am I going to sell my regular coffee at? The uh, 1.60938. Good, right? What's my total cost of goods sold? Uh, 24 and 14 one. Good, right? $24 and 14 cents. So now we need to update our inventory. In this case, I no longer have 225 left. How, I do, how much do I have? Two hundred and ten. Two ten. Okay. If I had three hundred and sixty-two dollars and eleven cents, and I sold twenty-four fourteen, how much should I have left? Three thirty-seven ninety-seven. So again, that should calculate your average cost to be the same price. Okay. Okay. So cost of goods sold for my regular coffee is twenty four fourteen. And now let's go ahead and do our Supreme. If I sold 10 pounds, now in this case, which batch am I going to take out from? The 94 uh, one, the first one. Mm-hmm, because we're using FIFO, right? So what is my total cost of goods sold here? Eighteen. Eighteen dollars. So then now we need to go ahead and update our inventory. To say that we no longer have 94, we only have 84 pounds left, right? 94 minus 10 is 84. So that should bring my uh, balance to um, 151.20, which should give me a total, total cost. Right now I have 209 pounds at a total of 379.70, right? 
So let's plug these numbers into my general journal. Okay. You still got ceramic mugs. When do we do we need to keep track of our ceramic coffee mugs? Oh no, it's periodic. It's periodic, so we don't do it till the very end of the month. Okay, so in this case, no need for that. So My cost of goods sold for my regular coffee and my Supreme coffee. What should my description be? So you still don't add the traffic yet, right? When do we calculate the cost of goods sold for ceramic coffee mugs? Periodic. I wasn't sure if you had put it on here or not. No, that that would that would answer your question. If you don't do it, if you don't do it until the very end of the accounting period, then no, you don't need to add it in here at all. But we will eventually have a cost of goods sold for ceramic coffee mugs. Just right, not not right now. Right, so what should my description be? In store use. Was it an in store use? No, it was a sale. It was a sale to who? Katie. Yes. Right? It's very important that we also keep track because in this case, we sold to Katie by the pound. And we also sold to Katie's ceramic coffee mug. So it's very important that you do keep track of who you sold it to in this case as well. Because what if Katie decides to come back and return some items? Okay, what if they ever strip some coffee back or um, they want us to... I don't know, something happened to the coffee mug, so they want us to give them a refund. You have to consider that we need to keep track of who we sell to on our books, okay? The other one is kind of harder to do because of um, it's just in-store sales, right? We don't know who our customers are, so we don't have a real good track record. And on top of that, we're not selling coffee by the pound. We're selling it by... We're selling selling it by the by by the cup, right? So in this case, this one is a more measurable way to make sure that when we do refund um, our um, customers, at least we had a, a track record that we did sell to them. Okay. So what's next? Is that all, or only? Say that again? Never mind. Teacher, what about ceramic? When, okay, so Maggie, I just answered this about 10 minutes ago. What, well, when do we calculate our cost of goods sold for ceramic coffee mugs. In this case, what method are we using to track our coffee mugs?
right? We have periodic and perpetual inventory, right? So what is my coffee mugs? Periodic or perpetual? Periodic. Periodic. So in this case, when do I actually calculate my cost of goods sold? At the end of the accounting period. So in this case, that is why we don't recognize it here because we don't care to keep track of it. We only find out at until until the very end of the month. So in this case, that's why there's no ceramic coffee mugs because we don't care to keep track of it. From where I am, I, I have to find this uh, notes about ceramic coffee mugs. Are we not doing it in our ledger? If I go to my ledger, doesn't it tell me how many uh, mugs I sold? Does that not tell me how much I sold already? Yes. It's 20 mugs. So far, we've sold 20 mugs. 26. Yes. So in this case, we are keeping track of it, but we're not calculating it right now. Okay, so then in this case, since we're already, since I already am in my ledger, let's go ahead and plug in all my values. So cost of goods sold, regular coffee. How many pounds did I sell? 15. I broke those ones. Sixty four twenty eight, right? So my previous balance was forty fourteen because I sold another uh, fifteen pounds for twenty four dollars and fourteen cents. Now my account balance is sixty four twenty eight. Okay. I also have to do my cost of goods sold for my Supreme Coffee. How many pounds did I sell? How much? Eighteen. For eighteen dollars. Seventy three eighty. Now I need to update my inventory. <laughs> Excuse me. Sold 15 pounds, general journal 7. <coughs> oh, excuse me. 
24, 24, 14. All right, so now I'm at 337.97, which does that match my inventory worksheet? Yes, it does for my regular coffee. <laughs> Is that you sneezing? Yes, yeah, sorry. Oh my god, it's so little. It's so oh, and, uh, I, I try to be <laughs> as discreet as possible. <laughs> All right. And then we have our Supreme Coffee. Sold 10 pounds, right? For 18, so then therefore, how much do I have left remaining? 379.70. 379.70, and does that match my inventory worksheet? Yes, it does. 379.70. So once again, your calculations on your inventory worksheet should match your ledger, okay? not the other way around. Your ledger shouldn't match this one, okay? Because in this case, when we put in numbers into the ledger, we're, we're typing in rounded whole numbers. Where your inventory worksheet, it we're dealing with unrounded numbers. So in this case, right, a good way to make sure that we are doing the calculations correct is to use this as a reference point, okay? To make sure that we're calculating everything correctly and we're typing in everything correctly and not making any typos. All right, and that is it for this transaction, All right? So then what has happened next? So I purchased from Restaurant Supplies, right? What did I buy from Restaurant Supplies? You bought um, coffee cups. We bought more coffee cups. Okay, so in this case, how am I going to record this? So basically, you bought office, I mean, uh, business supplies, and then um, you used a, a credit card. Good, good, good. But in this case, right, you said business supplies. Now, is it more specific? Oh, uh, oh, I just uh, looked at it. Uh, medium. I mean, uh, large coffee cups and medium. Good, right? Good, good. So in this case, you need to have medium. Coffee cups, you need to have large coffee cups. And we paid with a Visa payable, right? Account numbers. Uh, so for medium is 11,760 uh, 11, uh, and uh, large is 11,765. And then the visa payable. 
It was twenty two thousand. Okay, let's take a look at this. You have to add the tax to where? Okay, so in this case, yes, to the debit, which in this case, we have two items in the debits. Do we have to split it between them or no? How do you split them? Um, the 100 times 8.25 and then the 150 times 8.25? Correct, right. We have to prorate it. Okay, you can't just, uh, you can't just dump the whole entire tax into one coffee cup. Um, so in this case, I'm going to figure out what 100, right, times 8.25%, which could give you 8.25. So in this case, right, and then your coffee large ones. To give you the remaining of the twelve thirty eight, right? So in this case, you have one oh eight twenty five, and then you have one fifty plus twelve thirty eight. Okay, to give you. Two seventy sixty three. Okay. Right, we have to prorate it, right? You can also do it this way too. If you could figure out tax for one of them, right? So in this case, we solve for the first one, which is um, uh, 8.25%, which gave it to be a total of $8.25, right? You could easily just take the 270 63 and subtract the 108.25 and get the same exact answer, okay? Because in this case, I don't have to calculate what the 8.25% is um, and then have to round it, right? I can just simply just subtract it out and figure it out that way because then I know exactly how much tax to, to put to the other coffee mugs, uh, coffee cups, okay? So that's just another way that you could solve for the same answer, okay? What's my information I need to put here? Uh, restaurant supplies. Restaurant supplies. How many cups did I buy? Oh, uh, four thousand. Uh, that should be good enough. General letter. Right, we bought 2,000 of the medium cups. Which gave me a total of...
162.37. Good. Same information down below. It's the 19. We purchased 2,000 cups. So what's my total account balance now? Two hundred forty-three fifty-seven. Two hundred forty-three fifty-seven. Okay. And I gotta go to now. I gotta go to liabilities. Credit card. What was my grand total that I purchased? Two seventy sixty three. So how much money do I owe on my credit card? Eight hundred fourteen fifty three. Eight hundred fourteen. I'm gonna see what is wrong. I put a, yeah, um, yeah, I put a three in the 273. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Where else do I need to go now? To the subsidiary ledger. Yes. Yeah, I go to the subsidiary ledger. Because we dealt with a vendor, and if case we need to return the cups for any reason, we just go to that store and return it. Okay, so in this case, restaurant supplies. There you go. Right, we bought 2,000 medium cups at five cents each, which equaled 108.25. cups at and we use a visa to pay. General Journal 7. What was my total uh, receipt amount? Let's see, seventy sixty three, which we paid with a Visa credit card. Two hundred forty three fifty seven. 
So therefore, that should tell me I don't owe anything. So let's see what happened next. Pay Silver State Electrical use it using a check. So isn't that um, for a mold? Um, so we would have to pay the invoice three uh, three thousand three hundred fifty one. In okay, and where did you find that? In the uh, subsidiary. Yeah. So let's go take a look at the subsidiary ledger. Okay, Silver State Electrical. Okay, here it is. Right? It's due in four days, which is due on the 19th. And guess what? Today's the 19th. So there you go for 1070, invoice number 3351. Okay? So in this case, how do I recognize that I'm going to make a payment? Is that a check number? We also have to do a check number. To who? Silver stamp. Right, to Silver State Electrical. Right. So I have a check number. How do I record a payment to something that I owe? Payable. It is an accounts payable. And what did we use to pay? A check. Good. So checking. So what kind of information can I put here to represent that I'm making a payment? Silver State Electrical, check 1519. Good. All right, Silver State Electrical. Okay, we got an invoice number, right, 3351. Right, we're paying that invoice by using check number 
So where do we need to go next? To the ledger. So in this case, accounts receivable. I'm sorry, accounts payable. Here we are. Good, right? So I'll put invoice number 3351, check number, or in this case, PMT, check number 1519, okay? Which is going to reduce my liabilities by 1070. So in this case, what is my total account balance in my accounts payable? Okay, good. So going to my checking account, right? I paid so therefore how much money should I have now left in my bank account? Negative three hundred eighty-six fourteen. How'd you get a negative number? Oh, uh, I, I, okay. Uh, give me one moment. Four fifty-eight sixteen. Yes. Yeah, four fifty-eight sixteen should be. Yeah, got it. Okay. All right, good. And we also need to update a service of the ledger because we made a payment, right? We used check number 1519, making a payment to our invoice, number 3351. So in this case, all I have to do is fill in my payment account, which is going to give me a negative 10,000, excuse me, negative 1070 to give me a total, a total amount that I owe to be $0 to Silver State Electrical. Let's see if we have good on time. Okay, so then Albert submits another order. He submits another order to Super A Market. So with uh, that one you just uh, uh, put 
put in the uh, commission, uh, commission expense. Good, right? In this case, we're just going to put it into commissions for the four ninety eight eighty because in this case, right, it's just an it's just an order, right? We haven't completed the sales yet because we are going to be expected to deliver this on June twenty first. So we're going to go to our subsidiary ledger and at least make it note that we have a potential sale for Albert for Super A Market. For a total of four ninety-eight eighty. Okay. So here we are. We got some grand opening sales once again. What do I do here? So we're going to be using the accounts, uh, checking sales, discount sales, and also for media popular coffee sales. Uh, checking sales discount sales 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 okay so we don't have enough space in this journal right i prefer you guys to keep your transactions together don't break it up for any reason okay so in this case not enough room for in this transaction so what we need to do here is draw a line because that is a definite lot of space for a transaction to enter in right so this is just what I do. I just go up to my um, insert. I'm going to insert a line and draw it between here and here. And of course, when I send it to people, I'm going to um, sheet protect it so people can't enter in any transactions in between. All right. That means we're going to be starting on a new um, journal. Okay. There we go. And I'm going to do is I'm going to copy to save time because that's the great thing about technology, right? We can do what we can to save some time. And I just copied a whole transaction that we're going to be using. Right? This is the exact transaction. Um, and... Uh, yeah, now the date is June 19. Okay, not only do I have that, I also am going to also consider my cost of goods sold as well. Okay, so let's just go ahead and deal with our sales first and then um, go from there. Okay. Starting with the first account here, how much cash did we receive? So let's go ahead and there you go. How much cash did I receive? Eight nine eight eighty. Okay. How much was the discount for? What was my sales for the regular medium coffee? Regular large coffee was two sixty nine eight ten. Supreme medium two two four ten. Uh, Supreme large three oh three sixty three. And my coffee mugs were $69.90. And last but not least, my tax was $69.90. Okay. 
Okay, so I have a 10.06.37. 10.06.37. Oh, sorry, 11.06.37 on both sides. So we will go to um, the general ledger. General ledger. Okay. Right, we got some money from in-store sales. We're on the new general journal. For how much? What's my grand total amount I should have in my bank account? Um, what was that? Eight ninety eight eighty. Eight. Oh, okay. I meant the total total amount that you have in your bank account. Okay. You should have a total of thirteen fifty six ninety six. Got a sales discount. How much was my total sales discount? Two oh seven fifty seven. Okay. Bring in my grand total to be five hundred sixty six twenty eight. Five hundred sixty six twenty eight. Good. Mm -hmm. We're gonna go down the line. For our medium regular coffees, how many did I sell? Eighty six cups. Okay, we sold eighty six. So what's my account balance? Oops. Four eighty nine fifty four. Four eighty nine fifty four. Good. Okay. What about my large regular coffee? How many cups did I sell? Ninety. Sold ninety. For a total of two sixty nine ten. So in this case, what's my total account balance here? Seven 
1461. What about my medium root supreme coffee? Two two four ten. Bring my account balance to B. Six hundred thirty two forty six. Good. And then here we sold eighty seven cups. 87 for a total of 303.63 bringing my account balance to be 882.97 good 882.97 Last but not least, ceramic coffee mugs. How many ceramic coffee mugs did I sell? Ten. For sixty nine ninety. Bring in my account balance to two eleven sixty four. Two eleven sixty four. Okay. Last account but not least is sales tax payable. Let's see how much I owe the government. Here's sales tax. In store sales. For a total of $68.50, bringing my total account balance to be $186.87. Okay. Right, so let's go ahead and solve for our inventory worksheet because let's see what it says here. It says to deposit all cash sales to the bank. And of course, we have the in-store use of 16 and a half pounds of regular, 16 and a half pounds of Supreme. And we need to post it to our inventory worksheet. So let's do first things first is deposit the money. Okay, so deposits. We deposited $898.80, right? Oops, hold on. This wasn't supposed to fill in there. Okay. Is that correct? $800. Ninety-eight eighty, okay, is what we are depositing it in our bank. So this is where I'm going to have you guys calculate because in this case, I have also to include the check that I received earlier that day, right, for the one o nine fifty three. So in this case, the total amount of amount that I'm going to be depositing is going to be. $1,008.33. So this is what I want you to do because in this case, realistically, this is how you should deposit your money, right? You collect everything and then you wait till the end of the day to, de to deposit it. So then here you have a proof of a transaction that you deposited $1,008.83. Okay.
Now we need to go to our inventory worksheet because now I have exactly what I need, right? I, I used 16 and a half pounds of regular and 16 and a half pounds of supreme. So regular coffee. At what cost per item am I selling my regular coffee at? I have one dollar and six oh nine three eight. Uh-huh. So in this case, what's my total cost of goods sold? Seventeen sixty four. Uh, no. Twenty six fifty six. Twenty six fifty six. Twenty six fifty five. I have it on my end. Twenty six. Hold on. Twenty six fifty fifty five on my end. Okay, so in this case. We need to subtract it, right, 16 and a half pounds. So I should be at 311.42 in my inventory worksheet. And notice this, boom. By me using 16 and a half pounds, it has changed my average cost per item by two thousandth, twenty thousandth of a penny. I need to figure out what the number is for my Supreme Coffee. So in this case, I use 16 and a half pounds. At which batch? Right? The first one, the, 80, the 84. Mm -hmm. So in this case, what's my total cost of goods sold? Twenty nine seventy. Twenty nine seventy. All right, we need to update our inventory because I no longer have eighty four pounds. Right, I sold fifteen and a half, so therefore I should be left remaining sixty seven and a half pounds, bringing my grand total of one hundred ninety two and a half pounds at three fifty even. So twenty nine seventy for my supreme, and at twenty six fifty five for my regular. So I need to go to my cost of goods sold. So 
So what's my total ending balance in my cost of goods sold for regular coffee? Ninety eighty three. Ninety eighty three. Okay. Cost a good soul for my supreme coffee. All right. We used sixteen. And a half pounds. So what's my ending balance in my cost of goods sold for Supreme Coffee? Uh, what? My bad. Uh. One hundred three fifty. Good. Good. One hundred three fifty. Okay. So now we have to actually update our inventory on hand. Here's my regular coffee. I used sixteen and a half pounds. For a total of I think it was twenty six fifty five. Check your ledger here. Or your journal. Good. So in this case, what should be my ending balance in my inventory? Three hundred eleven forty two. 311.42, which matches my inventory worksheet. Okay. All right, so what's my ending balance in my Supreme Coffee? 350. 350 even, and does that match my inventory worksheet? Yes, it does. Okay, we're at 350 in my inventory worksheet. Okay, so this is where I'm going to stop here. So that means. The next time we come back to this, we're going to start on the 20th of June. Okay. All right. So um, right now, 